Deitch Tramway Village, home to the National Tramway Museum, sets out to depict the early years of tram transportation. It's a recreated period village set sometime in the early 1900s with cobbled streets and restored buildings. But the stars are an impressive collection of over 60 trams from around the world, each with its own story, from the horse-drawn trams of the 19th century to the electric giants of the 20th. The evolution of tram technology is on display and it's a story of boom, bust and boom. It all began in the early 19th century with uh, horse-drawn trams, a marvel of their time, offering a smoother ride than the horse-drawn carriages on cobblestone streets. And the world's first recorded tram was the Swansea and Mumbles Railway, opened in 1807. Initially horse-drawn, this tramway linked the city of Swansea with the village of Mumbles in South Wales. As the technology advanced, so did trams. The late 19th century saw the electrification of tram systems propelling them into the future. Cities like Blackpool embraced this change with its famous electric tramway opening in 1885 and still running today. Plenty of the old trams have found a home at Crouch and here you can see how it all began. Back then it was such a novelty that people from all over the country came to Blackpool to witness these lightning cars as they were called in action. The early 20th century marked the golden age of trams in Britain. Networks expanded rapidly, connecting suburbs to city centres and becoming an, an integral part of daily life. One of the highlights at Kreitsch is a ride on one of the vintage trams through the hilltop Derbyshire quarry site along the Marlon track. And as you rattle along, you consider the way in which trams spread across the world to every continent. Although, ironically, many countries have had the foresight to keep and update their tram systems, unlike this country where the war really saw the, the, the beginning of the end. The two world wars demonstrated the worth of tram systems across the UK. During World War I, trams played a crucial role in transporting workers to munitions factories and docks, becoming a, a lifeline for the war effort. And in World War II, the trams faced massive bombing raids and blackouts, but the tram services were often back in action just hours after those air raids, showcasing the resilience of both the people and the tram systems themselves. But three years after the end of the war, 1948, London said farewell to its trams with their ceremonial last tram week, which saw decorated vehicles parading through the streets as thousands of people bid them goodbye. And by the 50s and 60s, trams were dying out, replaced by buses, but above all, by private cars. The exception was Blackwood, where the trams had already become a key part of the seaside holiday experience. But the story doesn't end there. In recent decades, it's become clear even to car-obsessed Britain that private cars are strangling and poisoning our cities and that good public transport is essential. Electric trams are faster than buses, cheaper than trains and run on clean energy. And the late 20th century saw a tram renaissance with systems like Manchester's Metrolink, Sheffield's Supertram and Birmingham's Metro heralding a new era for this historic means of transport, at least in large towns and cities. Now, when we were at Kreitz, there were fairground rides scattered around the site and a fairground organ provided near continuous musical backdrop, giving a real sense of atmosphere. And the Kreitz Tramway Museum is not just a collection of trams, it, it's an experience that transport you, if you forgive the phrase, to another time where the legacy of trams is preserved for generations to come.
it's nice to know that trams have come full circle in the UK from being pioneers of urban transport to symbols of modernity and sustainability.